we did it. We successfully turned plastic fragments into strands. Pulling the strands with pliers, however, will never get us the consistent filament we need. As I mentioned in the last video, this curly strand of inconsistency can be cooled, measured, pulled, and spooled to hopefully get usable filament. This video explores the creation of each of those downstream stages, and throughout I will try my best to explain how each should work. The sketch was a good start, but CAD will allow me to start bringing these ideas to life. The first and easiest piece would be fans to cool the filament as it stretches. For that, I need a fan mount designed in such a way to maintain structure while allowing airflow. I was able to acquire a three pack of computer fans that should do just the trick once I figure out which wires provide power. One fan will cool the drive motor and the other two will cool the filament as it extrudes. The next stages I wanted to tackle were filament measurement and spooling. This introduced the first hurdle I had to overcome, stepper motors. My flying RC car project and prior participation in robotics provided me with experience in brushless and brushed motors, but I had never designed something that needed steppers before. Through the magic of editing, all of this becomes a working motor and flies us through all the research and experimentation. For filament measurement, let's take apart a set of calipers. Digital calipers work by reading the movement of a printed circuit board as it is pulled along with the opening and closing of the jaws. The board converts that movement into digital signals, which are output to a display. Traditionally, digital calipers have a battery and are entirely self-contained. There are, however, four pads which can provide power and output the digital signal from and to an outside source, respectively. In my case, the green and yellow wires provide the signal and the red and black wires provide power. The resistors, capacitor, and LED in the power chain regulate the input power and ensure the calipers get what they need. This assembled frame offers two parallel rails for the jaws of the caliper to open and close upon. A few 3D printed parts are needed to mount the jaws to the rails. Those parts and some bearings should create a mechanism that sandwiches the filament between two roller bearings. The diameter of the filament should cause the jaws to separate to the measurement of said diameter. After loading in the calipers and writing up some code to read the digital signals, I can test this concept. Unfortunately, in reality, the friction in these calipers and the system as a whole cause a lack of sensitivity and inaccurate results. This might work with a bit more tweaking and some lubricant or smoother calipers, but my confidence in it is low. Instead, I wanna try something different. I wanna try using light. This device is called a photoresistor. It provides a signal based on how much light it is exposed to. Coupling it with an LED, I can create a constant light exposure. When the filament passes between the LED and the photoresistor, it'll block some of the light from the LED. The blocked light will cause the photoresistor to output a lower signal. As the filament passes through, any changes in diameter will result in a larger or smaller shadow, thus blocking more or less light and creating a change in signal the computer can use to determine the deviation from the nominal diameter and hopefully adjust accordingly. As you can see here, with everything wired up, the LED affects the photoresistor as I previously described. Moving it closer to the photoresistor increases the value read by the computer and moving it further away decreases it. By holding both of these at a constant distance and pushing filament through, you can see the effects of the shadow on the photoresistor. Despite this being consumer filament, there is still shadow variation due to the relative proximity to the LED. Being closer produces a larger shadow than being further away. The hope is the tension in the filament will hold it centered. Printing an enclosure box and assembling these components into it fixes the two elements at the needed constant distance and provides a shroud from external lights to help ensure constant nominal readings. Feeding filament through the box and performing a rolling average gives a promising result that, again, with machine precision, will hopefully work. The last two stages are a polar and a reeler. The polar squeezes the filament between two wheels and rotates them to control the tension from the molten pool generated by the extruder. That print partially failed, which, if this works, it isn't a big deal, as I can just recycle it. The reeler uses a large acne thread to slowly move a bar with a guiding hole back and forth to allow us to regulate the filament into a tight spool as the spooler rotates. With all these components, the code gets quite complicated. Hours of conversation with these really smart rocks humanity tricked into thinking, paired with a proficient understanding of programming, yielded two scripts. 
The first is a Python script that generates a graphical user interface allowing me to click buttons that send serial communications to the second, an Arduino program, which receives those signals and triggers the movements of the stepper motors. The GUI has dedicated buttons for each stage with direction and speed control and also outputs the light values read by the box. Logic is also in place to scale the speeds of each stepper by the changes in the light values once the PID controller is turned on. The code does nothing without wiring the components. So, poof! Cabling rat's nest. With everything wired up, I can run my first test, which, I am sure, will go off without a hitch, and won't make awful noises, and require hours of troubleshooting, and will go perfectly. So nothing really works at all, especially the reeler. It likes to make banging sounds and it doesn't even work when I methodically smack it. Even with some lubrication, the reeler, and also the polar, would rather click than rotate. Swapping the PLA rollers on the polar for TPU should help it get a grip on the filament. Reducing the engagement area of the reeler slider should decrease its chances of getting caught and make it operate more smoothly. Those upgrades seem to have worked. The polar seems to be quite smooth now. Laying this out on my only fire resistant surface really provides perspective on just how massive and involved this is. There are so many potential points of failure that I might be getting over my head with the complexity of this project. Well, there's no time like the present. Let's boot this sucker up. We got up close. The best result was about a 3 foot strand of roughly 1.3 millimeter filament. The diameter stays mostly constant. Clogs and jams, however, in the extruder cause periods of material drought and then periods of material surplus, which makes these awful looking ones. Let's start tackling the shortcomings. This motor driver is useful in that it allows for the manual adjustment of speed and direction, however it is completely decoupled from the rest of the system. It also doesn't have any feedback on power. To fix that, I'm going to try to replace it with MOSFETs. MOSFETs are electrical switches that allow for large current control of small current signals. These MOSFETs, however, are garbage. They do not work. They are bad. While I wait for better ones to arrive, I'll redesign and reprint a few pieces from the spooler to the light box to the cooling system.
The light box has been upgraded from an LED to a laser. Lasers have much straighter beams, which should mitigate the proximity to the light source issue. Additional insulation will help serve two purposes. One, it will help to maintain heat, allowing for the system to heat up faster. And two, it will allow me to mount and thermally isolate a plastic feed funnel atop the extruder, which will help me guide material into the chamber. The spooler's spool holder gains some structural integrity and a little nub to help drive the rotation of the spool without slippage. Those side quests passed enough time that the better moss bed arrived. This is specifically designed for what I'm trying to do. So somehow giving it six amps was just enough to make the motor turn. So that ground wire, which doesn't seem like it would want to carry six amps, came all the way over here and did that. How peculiar. This voltmeter sensor thing was the culprit. The positive and negative terminals were connected to this negative terminal, which came to my common ground. So even after adding a USB isolator, it was still creating some sort of ground loop or something. So taking this out makes it so that it works now. And I'm not 100% certain that I even need the voltage sensing. So should be all right. So we burned out the old one of these. We bought a new one of those and fixed that. It turns out we do actually need voltage measurement because with just current measurement, when I turn it on, it does run at a constant speed. And I'm giving it half of the PDM, PWM value. And the way I have it coded is that when you add more friction, the amperage goes up on both. PWM signal goes up. The problem is when I let go, there's no way of knowing that it's now going way faster than it needs to, even though the current has reset to where it was. So I need the voltage to tell it how fast it's been, which means I need to take the wires that I already just cut off, and I need to re-solder them on here, and then put them into this, because of course I burned when I soldered. So hopefully that still works. This wiring, at least it sort of works. I did have to get a ground jumper, a ground jumper from the minus back to the source so that it doesn't fry itself. Uh, I also had to set it so that pin nine was the first and 10 was the second. And that allows me to get motion and both, which is what I want without anything catching on fire slash burning slash moldering, which is good. I clearly need to do that better and that better, but proof of concepts there. Of course, after all that, I wired it backwards, so it spins in the wrong direction. After a careful swaparoonie, we have rotation in the correct direction. Somehow, in just moving the motor across the room, it stopped working. Giving it power results in no motion. It looks like the power source is railing at maximum current, which means I fried something. I bought replacements for everything and a dedicated power supply for this motor, and after replacing the fancy MOSFET, it seems to be working again. Now we have 
stuff and then everything code going and when I flip the switch hopefully the motor turns on that's on that's on all oh, that's on fans are on nothing appears to be on fire victory now we just have a whole lot of programming to do The program works great. The polar button makes the polar start, the spooler button makes the spooler start, and the reeler button exposes that I didn't fix the reel the first time. Luckily, I can fix that by just using a better 3D printer. Seriously, Bamboo Labs knows what they're doing. This thing is crazy. Can you just swap out the old one real quick? Now let's see if these upgrades did anything. clearly more work to do. The PID controls of the motor still need tuning, the laser light system still needs testing, the reeler and spooler have to get material to them so they can be used, the program needs to stop losing connection and crashing, and I really need to clean up how this thing looks. If you have any ideas for fixes for any of those things, please leave them in the comments. Sorry that I couldn't get it working quite yet. This video is already long, and I have no idea how long it's going to take to get it fully functional. If you want to see where this goes, please subscribe so you get notified. See ya! Sorry it took me so long to post a video. I've had a lot going on. I moved, I got a cat, and between my job and vacation, I was out of state over 100 days this year, which makes it hard to work on projects at home. Hopefully, my schedule is now more conducive to being able to work on these projects. See you in the next one.